Hello and welcome. Today we are in the new tier 8 German battleship Brandenburg. The ship was given to me by Wargaming. I think Brandenburg is effectively a worse tepid. They're very similar ships. To the extent that I am using the same skill build on both ships. It's just that I think Brandenburg loses out on some of the differences they have. The biggest deal breaker to me is the firing angles of the Brandenburg compared to the tippets. These images are from the World of Warships fitting tool and they effectively show that the Tirpitz has about 6 degrees better firing angles than the Brandenburg. That is to say, if the Tirpitz sails towards a target and brings all of her guns to bear, she can be 6 degrees more angled than a Brandenburg can. Now you might think that 6 degrees isn't a big deal, but it kinda is, because if a Brandenburg brings all of her guns to bear at the target, that target has a roughly 25% chance of ricochets if Brandenburg were a flat armor plate. Compare that to Tepitz, who has something like a 66% chance of ricochets. It's a pretty monumental difference when you actually go at a target. Of course, it's not as bad as a Grossakofest is, who has 46 degrees. But it is still the biggest problem I have with the ship. Other things I would say are relatively minor in comparison. She has 305mm caliber guns, which obviously means worse overmatch and worse AP penetration compared to the Tirpitz's 380s. But she does get, for example, one extra secondary turret on each side of the ship, so that does mean more secondary damage output. And she does actually deal more DPM, and her broadsides are also actually heavier, they're just lower caliber. She also gets two knots extra speed, a little more armor, and better self-defense anti-air. But she also loses about 10k HP and, as I mentioned, the lower caliber pen and firing angles. She is okay, but Tippets is better. And it's not like Tippets is some kind of amazing ship at this point in the game. So I'm a little disappointed. She is definitely not replacing Tepets for me. Oh, and I just got pinged by a submarine. But I think I'm going to be okay, because there's an island in front of me. As long as I just accelerate, the torpedoes will curve into the island instead of getting to my ship. So I'm gonna be safe. Oh, and there's the U-190. So let's drop some uh, depth charges on her. Both drops, obviously. And just keep shelling the Gneiser now. The secondaries are effectively the same as they are on the Bismarck and Tirpitz as well. So I have IFHE for them. Those are the submarine torpedoes and just as I mentioned, because I have an island in front of me, I can just accelerate forward and the torpedoes will just home into the island instead of my ship. That's something that you should utilize against submarines because the submarine can't help it at that point. Come on guys, would you like to drop your uh, planes on the submarine as well? I have an ASW strike in 12 seconds, but the submarine has already disappeared, so I'm gonna try to track her. I'll try to keep moving at roughly the pace the submarine was moving at. It's gonna be a guess, but you never know. You might get some success from it. And now let's just keep going closer. The Gneisenau seems to be angled, so she's not a very good target. I guess the better target would be um, the Amalfi behind that island there. Richelieu shouldn't be a threat, I think. <laughs> 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 
We got the submarine. I've got to say, that was pretty good. And the Amalfi too, and now our secondaries open up on the Kagero. And there is an Atlanta there as well. Wow. Who do I even target at this point? The destroyer? The cruiser? Oh, and there's a destroyer on the other side too. Go, go secondaries, I guess. I do have to worry about the Sakatsuki slightly more, so I'm gonna start turning in on her. Because she most probably torpedoed in my direction. At least that keeps my two submarines safe though. Because the Akatsuki is not gonna advance over here with a battleship sitting on top of them. Oh, and the secondaries are doing pretty well against the Atlanta. The CV decided to join the battle too, but I'm not too worried about that. 2,000 damage. I think we can manage with that. Goodbye, Atlanta. We don't have a Hydro, though, so we can't get closer and spot the destroyer. There's also a King George, who we are going to secondary, but I think I need to plot a path out of here. This is a pretty sketchy position that I'm in. I don't think advancing here is a good choice. What I'm worried about is that the CV comes back and the destroyer is going to get the second set of torps off on me. I also don't know where that Benson is, and you never know what the Gneisenau might end up doing getting my broadside and stuff. So backing off, I think, is the safer choice here. Even though it means I can't secondary even further. Does that nice now think she can do damage with the depth charges to me? That's a little odd. Okay, we avoided those Akatsuki. Oh, <laughs> devastating strike. I hit eight of the 12 shells. Wow. By the way, the accuracy of this ship is, as far as I can understand, it's the same as Tepet's. Just 12 guns instead of eight of them. I do like the sound effect when they fire though. But we are backing off. We still have 13k HP with a heal ticking. So I think we're gonna be just fine at the moment. Somebody mentioned where the enemy second submarine is. Apparently she's probably close to that Benson. Here, the focus is gonna be on the Richelieu, I suppose. Who is gonna go down in a moment? Oh, Benson actually set me on fire and I have no damage control party. Or heal, but I should definitely survive the fire. I guess I have to park myself next to this island. I mean, it's a pretty good place to be. Nothing can shoot at me here. And if the CV wants to drop me, she has to take a really long path around. Because otherwise she'd have to fly through my di AA directly, then turn around in my AA and then drop on me. Islands are nice in that way. By the way, I like this new screen that you can check ship stats at. This is... This is the new H menu. My AA guns seem to be just fine at the moment. I'm gonna wait until my heal is up again at least. That way I'll have a lot more extra HP. I'll select the Gneisenau just in case for the secondaries. But it does appear that we're winning this match. I mean, it's what? 8 versus 5? I like our chances. Especially since one of their 5 is already that low HP. The CV seems to be intent on striking me again, but with a single plane, I don't see her chance of success. Although even if she manages to drop the torp, um, it's not gonna do too much. But this is where I make a massive mistake. I decide to accelerate forward, which is absolutely a bad idea because I don't know where that Benson is exactly. And I didn't fully stop to wait until Benson torpedoes pass. On top of that, my heal is ticking right now, so I won't have any extra healing or capability to tank further. I am definitely engaging the Gneiser now, obviously, right, with the secondaries, which is cool. But I'm also being shot at by that King George, and there's that pesky Benson ahead of me. 
Plus the CV is definitely gonna come back for another strike. I tried to bring my rear turrets to bear. Remember? Bad firing angles. And while doing so, I get caught by two torpedoes, which means my death. Even, even if I survive this, there's a CV lurking about. Nizenau is gonna get another shot, and well, so was the King George. I did get my Kraken unleashed, but it was, I think, a mistake to push forward there. But I suppose the Kraken might have been worth it. I think I would have been better off in a Tippets in this match. In fact, yesterday's Tippets video is what I ended up playing after this match. It might be a 7 versus 4, but it takes another 6 minutes for this match to end. So, let's just skip that part. 117k damage. Sank 5 ships, a devastating strike on a destroyer no less, 2 close quarters experts, a Kraken Unleashed and a High Caliber, and we even sank one of the submarines. So, even with all of my criticism, you can definitely do well in the ship. 2175 base XP. And let's actually compliment that Benson as well. The one that got me at the end. That was well played. By the way, we got all of that submarine's HP in just three airstrikes. So, let's take a look at the Brandenburg and port. First I'll show you the camos and then the armor, I guess. This is the uh, default perma camo. You obviously do have a choice between colors in here. You can pick the blue one or the black one. Actually, I think the black one looks pretty cool too. Huh. But there is also, if you... This is for 12,800 doubloons if you just get the ship. But there's also a more expensive package which includes the uh, Eagle Camouflage for the German, new German ships, which looks amazing. Like seriously, this looks really good. Long gone are the days of the rusty ships. Now let's take a look at the armor scheme that I mentioned, which is slightly better than the Tepets. So this is the 60mm icebreaker at the front. Let's compare this to the Tepets. Tepets has the same armor plate, but it sits much lower in the water, right? So you're less likely to be overmatched uh, when you fight against like a Yamato or something. So that's, pr that's a pretty good thing. Another advantage is that the main belt here is 350mm, whereas on the Tepets, I believe it's 310. 315, close enough. Also, you can notice that the middle armor plate on the Tepets is 50mm. On the Brandenburg, it is 50 under the turrets, but the straight middle is actually 80, which is thicker and thus less likely to be penetrated, although I'm not entirely certain how it would interact with uh, AP bombs from CVs. The Citadel though seems to effectively be the same, except it's narrower than on the Tepets. Or at least it's very very close to being the same, that there's effectively no real difference. Overall, I would say that you'd have to give the armor advantage to the uh, Brandenburg. I just, again, don't think it makes up for the worse firing angles. But they are pretty comparable ships, if we're honest. The big difference, obviously, is the guns. 380mm will overmatch cruisers, while the 305s will not. But I mean, people like the Scharnhorst for some reason, so maybe they'll like the Brandenburg too. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.